be bruised in the name of Jesus. There could be issues which is troubling everyone. There should be a property issues which normally brings and spoils the peace. But bruise that in the name of Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Bruise that in the name of Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Yes, He's a God of peace. He's a God of peace. He's a God of peace. Ask the fruit in your life. If peace is not there, that means there is no Holy Spirit in us. We need to ask that fruit. It's one of the symbol of the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we know the Holy Spirit in your eyes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, Lord. And ask the Lord for a greater peace in your life. Ask the Lord for a greater peace in your life. In Psalm chapter 119, verse 165. Psalm chapter 119, verse 165. He talks about the greater peace. We may be having the peace, but we need the greater peace. Ask the Lord for the greater peace. Lord, we are coming to your presence, Lord. You are the greater peace that we require, Lord. You are the greater peace that we require, Lord, in your presence, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Isaiah chapter 26, verse 12, it says, Order in peace for us. Ask the Lord to establish peace for us. Ask the Lord to, to establish peace for us. Let us not lean on our own understanding and the knowledge. Ask the Lord. Lord, I need a peace today, Lord. Lord, establish a peace between the families, Lord. Lord, establish a peace between the brothers, Lord. Between the sisters, Lord. Lord, establish a peace between the churches, Lord. Establish a peace among the nations, Lord. Let all of us pray at this time for the nations. The nations which does not have a peace. Remember the nation of Sudan. Remember the Ukraine. Remember Russia. Remember many nations at war. Lord, we ask you to establish the peace. Lord, we are a God of peace, Lord. Lord, we are a God of peace, Lord. We have come into your presence, Lord. We pray for all those nations, Lord. We pray for every family. We pray for every member of Life Church, Lord. Wherever there is no peace in them, Lord. Lord, order the peace, Lord. Establish the peace, Lord, as you have mentioned in this Isaiah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We are coming into your presence, Lord. As we are coming into your presence, Lord. And finally, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 33. It says very clearly, God is not the author of confusion, but He is a God of peace. He is a God of peace. He is not the author of confusion. If there is a confusion in our minds, bury that confusion. Bury that confusion today. If you have a confusion which is stopping your peace, Bury that confusion because our God is not a deserted God. Our God is a God of peace. Today we need to have the peace. Lord, we seek your divine peace, Lord. Lord, we seek your divine wisdom, Lord. Lord, bring the peace into our hearts, into our body, soul, and your families, Lord, and in churches and among all the nations, Lord. Lord, as we hear today, we declare and we commit each one of us into the hands, Lord. We commit the preacher, we commit the choir, we commit every member of this church, Lord. We commit our bishop and all the pastors and the families, Lord. Yes, Lord, give the peace of understanding that requires, Lord. And we declare this service is open in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. One more time, let's give the hands back to the Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Our God is a great God. Oh, yeah. There is power in the name of Jesus.
breaks every chain, break every chain, break every chain.
give a clap for Jesus. Tell your neighbor you are welcome in the house of the Lord. And you will never remain the same. Hallelujah.
place. I'll put you in front. You are all the others. What will I live for if I don't have you in my life? What will I live for if you take the whole thing? You are all that matters, Lord God. You have a
not to change that you don't make the same. That you make a decision that you want to be changed by His word this morning. If you want to speak to us, it's your personal journey that you take alone. It's a personal journey that you commit yourself to. It's a personal journey that you lift up your spirit to Him. As a Lord, I want to hear from you. I want you to change me. I know my story. I know my struggles. I know my fears. I know my challenges. It's only you who can deal with them. It's only you who can help me. It's a new only you can help me out of my challenges. You can secure my success. You can remove element of fear. And you make me bold to face any situation in this life. You know your story. And Lord, we glorify and we exalt you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Maya. We may take our seats. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and the Savior. And it's always a pleasure to see that we still believe that Jesus Christ can change our story. We still hold it true that despite of all things which are happening in the world around us, we still have the living hope in Jesus Christ. And by being here in the morning, we have made it a public show that we still believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. And we still believe in his word that he has told us that he will never forsake us nor leave us in all the challenges that we're meeting today. So I'm glad this morning that we still have a community which still holds the word of God true. Despite of our challenges, despite of all the things that we come across in this life, we are holding it true that his word will come and we shall give a testimony. Amen. Brothers and sisters, today I'll be just building my testimony on things that we've been speaking about and the word that has been shared before about hearing his voice in this modern world we have got vast channels of communication and everyone can take a mic and can be on a video and can say anything and people are bound to believe because we're social beings but are we supposed to believe everything that we hear today are we hearing from the voice of god are we waiting to hear from him most people, they say, I want you to speak into my life, but as a believer at the individual level, can God not speak to you? Can He not come through for you? So today, this is where my sermon will be around that each and every one of us, we need to search the scriptures and to find out if God gave a provision for all of us here to hear from Him. If we can hear the voice of men, is it not possible for us to hear the voice of God? Is it not possible for God to direct our lives before we take any decision in this life? Is it not possible for us to wait on Him and He can speak to us very clearly in particular that we know that God has spoken for me to take this role? So many people in this world today are frustrated because they are struggling in the, child, in the ways that they thought that God spoke to them. They held this way. They said, I feel I need to do this with my life. But when they start on that journey, they feel that there are so many challenges. They begin to feel that why my life is so hard? Why am I facing these challenges? But when we look back and we rewind the hands of time, we see that when we started these journeys that we are in this life, we never consulted him. We felt that I need to do this. We felt that I need to take this route. But when we were in those wood now, the challenges come. They said, God, come and bless me in this wood I am. But we never sat back and disconnected, asking, is this your will in my life? What you are going through, did he speak to you to do what you are doing right now? What you are aiming to do with your life, is that what he wants you to do? Did you ask him and did he speak to you clearly in terms of that you, by your name, I want you to do this? Is it possible for us also to hear from him that he can tell us what should we do in this life? That's why in this world today, we've got so many people are committing suicide because they feel that we cannot take any step ahead. They feel that there's so much of a wall against them. They feel they cannot take it anymore. They feel that the world is no longer with them. They feel that Christ has forgotten about them. But did he speak to them to take that assignment? So it is this question to us, brothers and sisters, as we're going to be talking in the next few minutes. Rewind back the hands of time in your life. Go back where you started to make your own decisions in life. 
maybe it's 18, maybe 16, maybe some for 20, you know where you started to make your own decision. When you made that decision, who was there when you made that decision? Did you see and say, I want to be this, or I want to be this? Did you go back and say, God, you're my father. I found myself here on earth because of you. What is it about my life that I need to do here on earth? So this is the deep-seated question that you don't get frustrated. If you know that you were selected by God to sweep the streets, like Martin Luther King said, you sweep them like the president of a country. Whatever that is more that you have been given to do in this life, you do them as knowing that the Lord who he has chosen you is pleased that you're doing it. But because of social media, because of the society, all of us, we want to be presidents. All of us want to have fame. All of us want to have riches. But is that what God has made us to be? We will start to look at Judges 6 verse 18. This particular verse was spoken about by Pastor Oketang at some time, and I really liked this verse so much. It came to a point that people were now asking, we have heard about God doing miracles and wonders, but today where are his miracles? If you look into today's world, you can agree with me that maybe the miracle that we used to hear of Paul in his missionary journeys, we do not see them as they used to happen in those days. But we believe also that God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Did he change from the days of Paul and today that he's quiet and he's not doing any miracles, the race, the dead are not raised, the blind are not seeing, the lame are not walking? Has he changed his ways? because we're in the 21st century. Where are his wonders that our fathers told us about? He told us that he took us out of Egypt by a mighty hand. But where are they today? Are we just living empty lives? We read about them in the chronicles of our fathers. Where are his wonders? You look into your life. Where are his wonders? Do you feel like you need to go somewhere to meet Jesus? Do you feel like you need to someone to speak to you to meet Jesus? If that's the case, you have to draw back. Because he said, I will speak to you personally. He said, it's my personal savior. But why then do people today feel that they need to listen to one person or to go to a certain place when Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. Don't go there when they say Christ is there. He will speak to you. So we need to rewind and pause and ask ourselves, where are his miracles? Why his wonders have stopped to manifest in my life? Why do I have to pray a prayer for the whole year? Is it too far? If he hears these wonders which are recorded, where are they? And we say he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why do you live a sickly life, a weak life, when God spins the universe? And me and you, we are just a fraction in this vast universe. And we live a sickly life. And we say we are the child of God, but the ambassadors of Christ. How do we recover and take everything? that the enemy is saying. This is our next verse. This month we're talking about David asking the Lord, shall I pursue the Amalekites? You want him, David, if you read about him, before he asked, David was a man of war. He used to have a band of people, they were called the rejected people. That's the people who started with David. Outcast of the society. And he built and rose and became a general that he fought the wars of Israel that when Solomon came there was peace in Israel but this general who is mighty he sits back and put his tools down the sword and everything he said should I pursue this is a mighty man of God 
that he can go to and win. He used to fight and even Saul, he used to get Saul in his palm, but he didn't kill him. But he is this mighty man, he is putting everything down. He said, Lord, shall I pursue the Amalekites? God says, pursue and we shall recover all. That's when he sat with his army. But there's another thing that we need to talk about, Bishop spoke about in the Sunday service. He said he's pursued with 600 men. But maybe he didn't ask that, shall I pursue with everything? This is me, you make your own conclusion. Maybe you should have asked, how many should I take? Like one time there was an incident that they were supposed to select people. They said, take them to the river. Those who drink like a dog and those who drink water, you select them. Maybe David did not ask. He said he pursued with 600. 200 dropped, 400 continued. So these things are particular in our lives. We human beings, when we get into a situation, we become very comfortable. We want to hold to this. That's why past is difficult to let go. We want to hold on to it. We want to hold on to memories. But Christ tells us that you are a new man. The old is gone. You are a new man now. You are no longer bound by things that you used to be bound by. But now you are born anew. Yes, sir. But why should you go back and carry that baggage again? How can God speak to us in clear terms when we still believe some things of our cultures that does not, is not compatible with the word of the Lord? Yes, sir. Consulting the dead. Why do we need still to go to the graves when Pastor Oke okay, told us that there is no relationship between the dead and the living? Yes. And he said, God, come and speak to me when I'm speaking to the people who are diviners, the spiritualists, and said, I want... And when they speak something, we wonder and we shudder. He spoke, but we have the God who even created that man who is speaking things oh, against our lives. Yeah, Where are his wonders that our fathers spoke about? So in every situation that we do in this life, did God speak to you? Did he really say that? Because we get to a place and we start to say, bless me, I want maybe, I'm not saying we shouldn't be Kuwait, but I want to be in Kuwait, bless me here, but God maybe spoke differently. Jonah had the same story until he obeyed things that to open up. Men in the ship, they said, same thing is wrong amongst us guys. Jonah said, don't worry, it's me. I'm not obedient to my Lord. When he went, he began to hear the People, they were ready to receive his word. But we were saying, so we are in our lives, are we where we are supposed to be? Because some of the prayers, maybe we might not need to pray them because we are forcing things. We are forcing things. And we are getting frustrated in the process. We are drained and we start to believe, no, God is not listening. He's not compassionate to my case. And we start to compare ourselves. Therefore, this envy, jealousy, killing and strife starts to arrive. Because James said, you ask, you are not getting once you don't get you start now to look around you what's happening, then this ground becomes fatal for jealous and strife. You're not hearing from your Lord. Who wants to speak to you, turn right, turn left. You will hear this voice. If you're willing and obedient. But why man is not willing and obedient to listen to the maker, to his father? Why? Why is he forgotten about the wonders and say, no, I want to pursue things which are temporary? Why is it so? You have to ask yourself, why am I disobedient to things which can work good for me? Why do I still hold on to things that make me bleed? Let go of the past. Forgive. Be able to humble yourself. Seek peace like we prayed in the morning. Go make peace with everyone. We are human beings who have got this we are, we are susceptible to have pride. No, it's him who did this. Therefore, he has to ask for forgiveness for me. No, I cannot go and ask for forgiveness. We are shame. Go and make peace. And make sure that when you go and worship and pray, your conscience is clear. Like Paul said, my conscience is clear. And God said, if your conscience is not clear, better leave your gift and go and make your conscience clear and come back and fix these issues. So brothers and sisters, he can hear us. We need to make our conscience clear. 
Lord, clear my conscience. When you pray, you don't just, oh, I have something, oh, I have something. Therefore, your prayer is diverted. You are exiting prayer without being sure. Did you listen to me or no? Because your mind was spinning with so much of things which are distracting you. You cannot silence the voice of the enemy with the authority of Jesus Christ because you still have issues that he can accuse you with. Settle those issues. Suffer to be cheated. That's what the Bible says. Suffer to be cheated. Go and humble yourself. I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry, my sister. Once they might be proud, they might be but pursue. I'm not talking of things that I did not do in my life. I pursued forgiveness at all costs so that my conscience is clear when I pray to him. When I feel that there is something wrong, even things that happens 10 years, I go back to them and identify them. Brother, I think here we did not finish things well. I need to settle this issue. So when I go to him, I don't hear anything. He can listen to my prayer. So God speaks to us in different ways. Some, they said, I had an impression on my spirit. Some, he said, I had an audible voice like Samuel. Different ways. But today, I want to dwell on the inner voice. This is one of the ways that he spoke to us, the inner voice. That I heard something telling me not to. I heard something telling me not to. What is that something that you are describing that gave you a direction of life? In many instances, people, they said there was danger where that I was denied to go. But why are we not giving God glory when he is directing our life and we're describing as something told me? When it is him who is directing our lives and we say, there was danger, but something told me, why don't you search what is that something and give it glory? He has saved you from danger. He has saved you from uh, calamities. Worship him. He still loves you, even in that trek you were going, maybe on your mission without even going to spread the gospel. But he held you with his hand. He said, hold back. And he said, I was saved from them. The inner voice. John 14, verse 26. Jesus Christ came and spoke and told everything that was supposed to be said with his mission. And he said, now I'm going, but I will release the Holy Spirit. He said, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. A teacher, I want you to believe there are teachers amongst us. A teacher is audible to his students. The student can hear the teacher and can understand the teacher. But today, if you go outside here, do we hear the Holy Spirit screaming? How is he teaching us? How is he talking to us? How do we know that the Holy Spirit has spoken to us? For me today, I'll put it as an inner voice. He speaks to the spirit man inside. The spirit calls to the spirits. The deep calls to the deep. That what you say, I heard something telling me inside. It's not the physical ear which is hearing it. It's something beyond that we cannot describe it. The inner voice of God is speaking to us. Brothers and sisters, we need to listen to it. Sometimes it goes against our short-sighted will. I want to go to this city, buy and sell. But is it where God wants us to go? Is it where what He wants us to do? Why don't we sit and listen to Him? He will teach you all things. Meaning that my job, my family, my dreams, my everything, He will teach me when I want to take a decision. Shall I settle in this city? Yes or no? It will be clear. Shall I pursue this job? Yes or no? It will be clear. That's the first thing to consult. But as men, like I said, we are social beings. We want validation from people. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? In that process, I will show you from the Bible, it's one of the most dangerous ways to do. You have to go back to God and ask Him. Solely Him should direct you. So the Holy Spirit will give us all things. Don't feel lonely. Don't feel dejected. He is there to talk to us if we are ready to accept Him. Our conscience being clear, we remove the thing of presumption. Everything, we are clear to listen to Him. He will speak to us, brothers and sisters. Don't feel that your story is different and unique. 
everyone goes through the same challenges. You grow up, you leave your mother's house, you get married, you work, you have your own children. The cycle is the same and the challenges are the same. And we have to come to listen to God and He will teach us all things. So go back home and listen to Him as He directs the ways of your life. Some, it will not be tomorrow, it will be next month, it will be next year, but it is good for us to be driven by the Holy Spirit because we know that we are walking according to His way. But some will remain not hearing this voice. I get this message. I want God to hear me, but He's not hearing me. I cannot hear Him. But what is happening in these circumstances? Why can you not hear God? Ephesians 2 verse 1. Paul is talking to the Ephesians. We have accepted Jesus Christ and he's telling them something that is fundamental and that we need to hear from him. He said, And you he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. So if we take the definition of a dead person and a quick person is alive and dead. So if you are dead, David said, whoever goes to the grave cannot praise everything is gone, there is no communication. He cannot hear and obey your commands. So if we are in sin, we are good as dead. Therefore, his word, we cannot hear from him. But Paul says to the Ephesians, he has made you alive now so that you can respond to his commands. You can hear his voice. You can hear when he speaks to you. Now you are alive. You are away. You are away of your environment. You can interact with the environment. You can take direction and you can obey. But if you are in sin, it's good as if you are dead. Therefore, no matter how much you say, God, speak to me, speak to me, his voice will not reach out to you because you are in a dead state. And men, they said, he has not listened to my plea. He has not judged my case accordingly. He has not saved me justice. But yet, we are in sin. So brothers and sisters, if you know that you are dead, or some areas of your areas are dead, make it a case that you make them quick, which is alive. You have to pay the price of hearing from God. Sin always strive to come up. Things that we say, I don't want to do, again, you find them, they are still pursuing you. The civil, the inner civil uh, war that goes in every one of us. That which I don't want to do, this is what I want to do. Paul had this inner civil strife. So if you want to hear from God, make sure that you are secure. If you sin, ask for forgiveness, it's just forgive us if we confess our sins. So if that is settled, we are sure that the inner voice is clear. There's no doubt, there's no confusion that um, do I take A or B? There is no beating about until we, we, we choose the wrong option and we find ourselves in the wrong state and we find ourselves living a weekly life and a weak life and a struggling life. Because the best is not set right. We keep on clustering, but we are not looking at the fundamentals. We are not going back into time. We go back to history. Where did we go wrong? Where the wonders of his works stop? Where did his wonders stop that our fathers spoke about? When we identify that problem, we look at our behavior in that particular. What we were doing and what are we doing now? So how can we recalibrate ourselves to be aligned with him? So we need to have to be made alive to hear his voice. If you're alive, you hear his voice, he will tell you yes, he will tell you no. You're not proud and you're obedient and you will lead a life that is full of peace that you pray for in the morning. Fix the best. Once the foundation is solid, everything is set. But if you fix the roof, once the solid, this foundation is not solid, it's just a work of struggle. Because you are fixing uh, uh, the trusses of the roof, this, the foundation is not solid. The structure again, it wants to fall. You, fix, you are just 
giving yourself stress, but you step back, go back, rewind things, and see where his wonders stopped. And then you know how to calibrate. So this can stop us from hearing from him as well in Colossians 3, verse 1 to 9. We will not read all of it, but I want us to maybe read maybe one or two verses and then you go home, you read. Because God was very clear about things that he does not like. He gave even sin's name so that we look at it and we go one to two. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, which Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead, for you you are dead, and your life is hid in God. When Christ, when Christ who is our life shall appear there, also you shall appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your mom, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, in order then it starts now to chronicle the things that which can take away the opportunity for you to meet Jesus when he appears. Mortify means kill, means make cease to live. Even though you are still here on earth, you are subject to these passions and lust, but you have to have super control over the mind and the body. Because once the mind is not taken captive, it is the breeding ground of action. Because it starts as a thought and it manipulates, it, it manifests as an action. So brothers and sisters, if we are not able to modify these members, we are not able to kill these members, these, these uh, acts, we are not able to hear from him and we are not even aware that he's about to come because we are dead in sin just as those who do not believe and what is the use of putting all the effort when we're putting one leg in and one leg out and james told us that man should be sure that god will not answer that man that man should be sure that he cannot answer a double-sided man he cannot what is the point? Put your feet inside or outside. So we have to settle the foundation. The principle of hearing from God. The principle of walking with Him. The principle of waiting on His answer. No matter how much it takes, it is the right answer. That we take a short answer, it frustrates us. We bleed. We are weak. We are sick. And we die in ignorance. Yet our Father spins the entire universe with His Word. So we need to make sure that we are hearing from Him and we are not living in sin. If we are living in sin, seek forgiveness. If men and to men the relationship is not strong, pursue peace in those relationships. Hear the pain of you asking for forgiveness to make sure that the peace is enjoyed. Then you know that you are set. We are human beings and it's difficult. We are bound to be proud, like I said. No, I cannot, I cannot humble myself this. But why, what is, what is the cost? What are you going to get? You are going to get eternal glory. So it is what you need to look beyond this, these things. These things, they cannot last forever. They will come to an end. We know that the system of the world will come to an end and the system of all Christ will take over. So why are we sacrificing the eternity to think that we need to feel the pain for one hour, two hour, and recover from that pain and pursue the right things in life? Live life on a strong, solid foundation. That you have said that God spoke to me. I know He spoke to me. You are not doubting. You are not guessing. You are not frustrated. You are not feeling lonely because you are hearing from your Father through the inner voice. He speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. So God wants to speak to all of us. We are His children. We are the works of His hands. He cannot forget us if we are willing and obedient. Now the guidance, now the examples. Do we find people in the Bible who the Holy Spirit spoke to and they manifested and they spoke which was true of the Holy Spirit? Yes, 
there are people in the Bible. Because when we, we exercise faith, we need to see the principle and we see the application of this principle and what was the result so that we make all these things from the principle we have to apply it we have got agabus agabus was a prophet paul was coming from asia and was going to jerusalem and was going to face so many challenges and agabus comes and speaks to paul did he speak the right thing let's check in acts 21 verse 10 to 11. So you also, when someone comes and speaks to you and says, the Holy Spirit told me this, Holy Spirit said, check, is this person saying the same thing like Jesus? Don't say, ah, he spoke to me, then you start to pursue things that will get you frustrated. Is this aligning with the word of the Lord? Agabus came, and he met that there was a group of people with Paul coming, and then Agabus intercepted them, and he started to tell them and demonstrate things. But is it what the word of God was saying to Paul and Agabus said and as, as we tarried this is a Luke writing as we tarried there many days they came upon from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus remember this prophet yeah remember this prophet because later on we are going to see another prophet as we tarried we are named Agabus and when he came down to us he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said thus said the Holy Ghost so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the men that own this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. You go home and read this. What Agabus was saying, it is true. Paul was going to suffer many things. Paul was going to be subjected to pain and struggle because of the word of Jesus Christ. Agabus was saying true things. Paul knew how because when Paul was converted, he said, he, tell him that he will suffer many things. So Agabus was not saying things that Paul was not aware of. Paul knew by being on a mission, he would suffer many things as from the day he met Jesus. So we, when we hear from the word of God, is it aligning what God told you with your life? God told you you are going to be, let's say, a pilot. Someone said, you know, you are going to be an ex. They say, ah, maybe, yes, 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 yes. But did he say that? Is it not conflicting with this best? What is your uh, blueprint of your life? If today we leave our blueprints here in the room, can someone find and read and say, ah, no, I know this person. I know this person. Because your life is reflecting that blueprint. Or we leave the blueprint in this room, people they will say, I, I don't even know where I can get these people. So we, have, we should have a blueprint that people they know that this is this person. Wherever we pass, they know this person was here because we can see his trails here. This is him. But when we pass, they get confused. That is, who is he? We don't even know what he's driving his life. It's just a wind going south. Not We don't even know. He's not coherent. We don't have his blueprint. But when we pass our mind to the next people, they know what we were chasing in this life and they get built on that. Generation upon generations, we have a clear cut map. But when we leave our blueprints to our children, to our fathers, maybe to anyone, they will get confused. That what are we seeking in this life? We want to be here, we want to be there, we want to be there. They are not even clear. They get confused themselves. So, meaning the one who wrote that, he was even confused. Then he was calling, God, come to my confusion. And God said, I'm not the author of confusion. They come into my. God does not even know who we want to be. Today we see this video, someone is doing this on this video. Tomorrow he said, I want to do this. Before you even finish it, you are on the next thing. Jesus Christ said, if a man wants to do anything, can you not sit down and count the cost? And he built this house and he does not finish it. People will laugh at you. So many th houses are left halfway. And people say, but what is it? Okay, we do what this. God even did not speak to us. We hear by people, oh, this is profitable. This is what we need to do. Yeah, okay, we, we went to do that. Immediately, another trade comes in. This is profitable. Then, end of the day, that man cannot hear from God because he's confused. He does not have a blueprint of his life. And God said, I'm not the author of confusion. I cannot come in this. And then, God, you're not seeing my struggle. I do everything. But the best, the principle, what is driving you is not 
right. You might be doing things which are seemingly right. Like in Colossians, they do things which are seemingly right. Do not touch, do not do. But these things, they cannot harness the power of the word of God. They seemingly good. They accept God is there, but they refuse the power thereof. So we need to make sure that we hear from God. Whoever speaks in our lives, check your blueprint. If you're telling me to be uh, an ex-person, but God told me that I should be this. But why God now bring this confusion to me? You go back to God and say, I'm not the author of the confusion. So if he spoke, you need to listen to him. Now as we close, and uh, let's maybe finish the examples. Uh, 2 Peter verse chapter 1 verse 21. Because we have this problem even today. No, your books are not right. Your books are works of men. But is it true that our books are works of men? Peter settles this issue. For the prophets came not in old time by the will of men, but the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So if anyone is doing the work of God, he is yet to be moved by the Holy Ghost. If you are moved by your own understanding, the Bible tells us, lean not on them, because you will run dry at one point. When you run dry at one point, James comes and tells us that, that that's an opportunity for you to have strife, fighting, and jealous because you're asking and you're not getting. Then the society starts to shake. The society starts to be weak. Trust is gone in the society. We are no longer looking for each other. We are just looking at each other as profit. What can I gain? How can I cheat my brother? Because that society is devoid of the principles of life. The ethics in the society is gone. All of us will look at each other as business. What can I sell to my brother to get profit? Because the ethics, the foundations of the society are gone. No one is hearing from God anymore. No one is even wondering to ask, where are the wonders of this world? How can we go back to make sure that we recalibrate the society so that God can speak to us in the right direction that he wants us to go? So it's about now the works of men we're trying to manage by our, our energy. So that's where the game starts now. The cheating and whatever. There is no more trust in society because people are now using human energy. So Peter said that that's, it cannot be possible that the prophets wrote from themselves. They were moved by the Holy Spirit. If they were moved by the Holy Spirit and wrote the scriptures, so how can we read the scriptures with the human intelligence? We have to hear from God. We have to hear from the Holy Spirit. We have to be driven by the Holy Spirit. Whatever we do, whatever we think, whatever we, we do, we, we, we go through the think of things which are above now. So brothers and sisters, are you hearing from God? Did he speak to you to pursue what you are pursuing in this life? Are you sure? Can you stand beside a baby uh, in front of God and say, yes, you told me on this particular, can you go back to this incident? So as we close, let's look at the consequences of not listening to God. Okay, you want a man of God to speak to you, which is good. But you have also to hear from him. Because it is he who is speaking to the man of God and also to you. So if a man of God speaks to you, he has to confirm which already is deposited in your spirit. Let's see one particular instance where uh, there was a challenge faced by one prophet of not listening to God. Let's open First um, Kings 13 verse 26. Here a young man prophet was sent to the king to tell him about what is going to happen and all that and he was told by God specifically do not interact with that society at a human level do not eat do not do anything you have to deliver the mission exit the city then the young man then the old there was an old prophet in the city he heard that there was a young prophet who came and proclaimed certain words and asked his son where is he going to they said he gone this way he said please Prepare for me and don't care. I need to speak to the prophet. 
And when he met the young prophet, he said, please come back, let's eat. And said, no, 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 God told me I should not eat. Said, please, please, I'm a prophet, come, let's eat. And then he went back and he ate. And then he sent on his way. A lion came and mauled him to death. And then this verse is talking about it. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way he had off, he said, it is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Therefore the Lord has delivered him unto the lion, which has torn him and slain him according to the word of the Lord, which is back unto him. If you hear anything, if someone says you something, did it confirm with your blueprint? Then you see the importance of God speaking to you about your life. We go to prophecies, we go to hear, hear things, ah, God is speaking something, but did he tell you, this prophet was told specifically by God, do A, B, C, D. So God will not come and bring, bring confusion to him. The man we went and committed, no, and the prophet also said, no, no, no. And God spoke, no, no, come, and then ate, and then he was moved by the lion. So you also, you need me and you, we need to have a blueprint in life. God told me, I'll be in Kuwait for this time. When it's about time to leave, I will not struggle about buying a visa. Because he had told me, you'll be here for this time. You're about to leave. Like Paul said, I know I'm about to die. I know that it's nearing. So we also, we need to know, I'm here for such a time. I'm here for such a time. How? By the Holy Spirit. We have the access to him. We have to listen to him. So if our blueprint is clear, brothers and sisters, all the challenges that we're facing today, they might not be faced maybe, because we're hearing from him. We are always leaning onto him. We are always listening to him. Let's close with John chapter verse 5, chapter 5, 19. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. For what things, what, what, what things soever he does, these also does the Son likewise. So you can see the inseparability of Jesus' actions and God's actions. So Jesus, before he undertook anything, anything, he has to relate to the Father. If he does anything, he has to see the Father doing it. There was no confusion between the two. So if now we are in Christ, we believe God through Christ, so there should be inseparability with our actions and Jesus' actions. So if we do not, and Jesus is doing something, therefore there is a challenge. So someone who is us, he has to look into himself. Am I still in this football? Am I still in his way? Am I still listening to his voice? Am I still experiencing his wonders? You know where you are, brothers and sisters. You are experiencing his wonders, or the wonders have stopped. Or you are trying to regain to go back to his wonders. You know where you are. You know your struggles. Go back. If you are having a challenge in life, go back and rewind. Find what are the causes of this challenge. Listen. Check around, why am I in this problem? Why am I in this success? You learn about the principle, because there are principles that you might be applying without knowing. And also everything in the world is based on principles. So you have to listen to the principle that, okay, what is happening? Why am I in this period? Why is this happening? You have to ask why. You dig in, you dig in, you dig layer after layer until you find way it is beginning and then everything becomes clear I wish all of us blessings in our lives in our families because the world that we are living in to be honest brothers and sisters it is the world that God has spoken about the love of men will grow cold and we are experiencing it but I pray that we hold on through thick and thin knowing that he can speak to us Listen to his voice. Go into prayer. Clear your mind. Don't